I think the biggest fear of the power structure at the top levels, the lower ones might not understand, but at the top levels, clearly their fear is that we become aware of who we are. Anything that would lead to that, they don't like because, see, we have a lot more potential to do things than they do. From Alcapulco, Mexico, this is Anarchast. Hey everybody, welcome to Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. I've got another great first-time guest, so many great guests lately. It's uh, Richard Sachs of the Lost Arts Radio Show, and I've actually been on his show, and we've actually been talking offline quite a bit because I get the sense he's really on to a lot of things that I've been starting to realize myself. And uh, as you know, here on Anarchast, or even on my personal YouTube channel, I've, I've done a lot of uh, work on myself in various forms, a lot of consciousness sort of stuff, a lot of... Uh, health stuff including fasting and the fasting thing to me has really stuck with me as being shockingly good uh, I was not expecting uh, to uh, when I first wrote it was about two years ago I wrote on Facebook FBI book I wrote that uh, I am gonna try a fast for a couple of days and all the comments were like you're crazy you're gonna die you have to eat and all this sort of stuff and on day two of fasting I had never felt better in my life I had so much energy and I was like there's something to this and I went on I've done numerous fasts since then. I think during one fast, I just quit smoking like on day two of the fast. I've uh, Just so you know, I've started re-smoking in the last few months. Been going through a lot of stressful stuff. It's sort of been a little bit of a crutch, but I'm planning on probably getting off of it again at some point here fairly soon. But uh, but on, on one fast, I just had no desire to smoke anymore. And so I was like, there's something to this fasting stuff. And I got talking to Richard and actually he I was on his show and he told me, you should check out these uh, scene gospels. Um, I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, Richard can explain about it a bit. Apparently, it's something that could have been in the Bible, but isn't. And you know, this whole Bible thing, I'm still like, who put in what parts? I'm, I'm trying to figure out like what's going on. I know there's some so, some good stuff in there, but I know there's some lies. And then when Richard actually said, just read these Essene uh, Gospels, and I don't know much about them. We'll let Richard explain that a bit later about what that actually is. It basically, it made perfect sense uh, what was in those books. It was about fasting. It was about that's how you connect with God is by cleaning your, your body as your temple and, and all these sort of things. And it just rang so true to me. And uh, I just got talking more and more with Richard. We actually did. He does like sort of co consultations with people about, uh, you know, sort of about how to live these sort of ways. And he has a really interesting diet. I don't want to make this intro too long here, Richard, but a really interesting diet. I think you just eat nut <clears throat> nuts, fruits, and raw milk, I believe. I uh, will talk about that uh, uh, he, and he talks about longevity and all this kind of stuff and it all makes a lot of sense to me so I was like Richard let's get you on anarchist I know you're an anarchist so let's get you on here you're also thinking very seriously about coming down to Narcopoco and just for people who don't know the whole entire health and wellness of portion of the event will run the entire event this year uh, all four days of Narcopoco there's gonna be a health and wellness stage and if Richard comes down we'd be very happy if he spoke on one of those stages and and uh, did some of the things that he does so that's a long introduction Richard but uh, it's quite a bit to talk about. We're going to get into a lot of this stuff. So if you're out there looking for even just health things, uh, pay attention to this. I think there's something really to what Richard's talking about here. I've done it personally, and I've felt it. Uh, and then if you're into, you know, being happier or being more conscious or connecting more with whatever you want to call it, God, universe, whatever you want to call it. I don't really care about the names. Uh, but having that connection, that feeling, I think it comes through really cleaning out your body and then cleaning out your mind, which I've talked about with the the, the therapy work I've done and the hypnotherapy and all these sort of stuff. Uh, Richard's really qu quite an expert on a lot of this stuff, so I just want to throw it out there that I've tried all these things and all of them have been working very well for me. I've been doing incredibly well personally. So Richard, true pleasure to have you on. You know the first question. How did you yeah. become an anarchist? Well, actually, um, I, I guess I was born with the problem of, of needing to question everything and say, you know, why? Uh, well, I had to be able to talk first, but as soon as that happened, I started mm -hmm. asking, why do you have to do this? And I really gave pro probably an unintended hard time to my elementary school teachers because, like, I remember when they said to uh, memorize the multiplication tables, I wanted to know why. Why do you have to do that? It's right there. You could look at it. And mm -hmm. once it, they explained, you know, to my satisfaction as a I don't know, eight year old or something. Then I said, fine, you know, I'll do that. And I just wanted to know why does everybody know that something is true or that it's necessary? And also 
to a large extent um, what's possible. And I never got over it. So I'm, I'm still coming from that point of view. And it, it's led to some really unusual places. And I presume a uh, p- part of those places has been to realize that uh, being owned by government and how government works and, and being actually a slave and having rulers is probably not a great thing. Is that part of the realizations that you had over time? Yeah, I wondered why that is because, you know, it was a really long process for me to finally realize the nature of the entire power structure that is behind governments and global corporations now because they're almost indistinguishable at this point mm-hmm. and governments are legally corporations for the most part or webs of corporations and um, I wanted to totally understand where that came from what's behind it and I saw it creating incredible suffering in the world and I just had a preference to not see people being you know torn to pieces that way and I, I started Health, serious health research about 1965 and then about in the last 20 years of that at the same time I did a really in-depth investigation of the global power structure and how that's um, been in control of most of the world for a long time took that back several thousand years and and at least that far and I found out that at the top um, it's actually controlled by very brilliant, very malicious beings, not very many of them, that people would never, normal people would never think anybody could come from that place. And I think that's their main camouflage, is that people think other people are kind of normal. And on on those Mm -hmm. levels, it's not really the case. Yeah, that that uh, that happens a lot with a lot of people when I'm trying to explain to them. Now, these people are, as you pointed out, incredibly smart. I don't know what, uh, how they have these uh, levels of knowledge. Uh, and that's something, too, that we can talk about, about how you can possibly attain these levels of knowledge. And I think, you know, for whatever reason, incredibly smart, but also incredibly nefarious. And they have no problem killing tens of millions or hundreds of millions of people uh, just to get their way. And uh, I think we talked about this before uh, in another conversation about it's not really about money it's about uh, power and control and subjugation of pretty much the entire human race which they've done to an extent now as we know and you're talking about your uh, your experience in the government indoctrination camps and schools I remember too uh, when they're like you have to memorize all these mathematical tables and I was like like you I was like why and they're like well it's not like you're gonna have a calculator with you all the time and it's like oh really like uh, <laughs> uh, I've got more than a calculator with me all the time it's fine I don't need to you know it's great if, you, if that's what you want to do right if you want if you're really into math I'm just not that into it so it's like it's it's useful obviously and it's good and I need to know numbers at certain times but I don't need to be memorizing all this stuff so I was very much the same way as you just questioning everything and I think I've gone on just to continue doing that my whole life as you so you know where do you start with what you've learned by questioning everything what would you like to say to people about what's really going on or what it is that you've uh, learned yeah I mean considering the the depth of this subject I'm so grateful that you've scheduled 12 hours for this interview <laughs> I don't think we finished in that time but I, I can't do 12 do, it's do too much but, but, but we definitely we could talk about it easily for 12 we could talk about it for 12 days or 12 months you know, uh, that, yeah, almost yeah, endless yeah, amount exactly, of things to talk about when you really understand what the subject means it's who you are and out of that comes what you can do and what's the point of being here right now? What's your purpose? Because, as you know, any activity that starts without a clear sense of purpose is probably going to go off track without even knowing it. Um, several things I wanted to say at once. One was that uh, you were describing the motivation of the people at the top. They have no problem in uh, doing some unpleasant things to people to get their way. And, and it's, it's even beyond that. Some of these people at the really top levels what they want is to cause massive suffering as much as possible and that's the ceremonies that they're into of doing things to children and stuff it really is going on it's it's beyond a horror movie and it, it's not the point to get into that and feel really upset it's just to be strategically aware that that's where all these different agendas that we're dealing with come from and, and that seem like separate things you know the toxic medicine and the poison food and water and air and the chemtrail activity that's going on now all over the world and has 
not just toxic metals, but dried blood cells and biological weapons and stuff in it, and the, and the frequencies they're choosing for the Wi-Fi and the wireless devices and the smart meters and 5G. And this is all unified. It's These guys, in, in addition to being incredibly smart, are geniuses at organization, and not just in telling people what to do, but providing different levels of motivation to the different levels of servants they have. You know, some think that it's going to be fantastic money and power and prestige and perks, and they're into it for that. They don't know who they work for, really, and then at higher levels, it's they tell them, well, we're, we're going to reduce population, and at the top levels above that, they let a few people know that, yeah, that we're doing a ceremonial sacrifice of the entire biosphere because they believe in the doctrine of sacrifice, which is that if you kill something innocent, I know this sounds bizarre, I'm sorry, but it's in the Bible and all kinds of scriptures. If you kill an innocent being and you do it just right, God's going to be really happy with you. It's going to be great. You're going to get all this spiritual benefit and then you're going to eventually merge with the being that you're worshiping, which in their case is a not very nice being. And at the levels way below that, it's about money, but um, not not at the top. So my interest in that was not to get lost in it emotionally, but to be aware of it. And then my question was, uh, since I like solutions, and it looked like you couldn't, really overcome what they were doing with that much momentum by fighting individual issues head on um, what can we do to take out the cost of the whole thing and I still feel like that's a, a primary interest of, probably the primary interest and then on the way to that I found a place where health fits into it because what we're told about health is not the real story and Doctors in the U.S. and other parts of the world get murdered for exposing even a little bit of it. And I thought, mm -hmm. well, we need to expose all of it because if we have a, a total picture of it, we could use it. And then from that, once you're done with your health problems and that doesn't bother you anymore and you're not worried about aging or infectious disease or degenerative diseases or cancer, all these things, once that's gone, which it easily can be, because that's our normal state, then you can start your real work, uh, which is internal and not physical, but it affects the physical dramatically. And that gets to where you can actually affect the root of, of this thing that they intend to do to the world and reverse it. That interests me a lot. Yeah, for people out there who, um, uh, I've met some people, for example, we have at Anarchapoco speaking people like Mark Passio and David Icke. And the reasons I want people like that there is because they have done a lot of work to try to figure out how this whole system works. And they've got a lot of evidence of it all and, and some just amazing work and, and how it all works and why and all these sort of things. But there's some people who I meet every now and then, they're like, why do you have all these crazy conspiracy theorists at your conference? And I'd like to explain to them somehow <laughs> that uh, what you see isn't necessarily uh, what's really going on. And <laughs> for, for, for whatever reason, uh, some people just refuse to even um, ex uh, even to think about that, these, that there might be other possibilities. And really, that's really what it comes down to for me is at least giving people, or at least allowing people the ability or the opportunity to have access to this information. And if they so choose, to, to look into it a little bit. Uh, but as you know, Richard, and as I know, and I, I've looked into this stuff for probably about 20 years straight now, every rabbit hole you go down, there's the same people at the end and you see how they're doing it. And it's 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 amazing. It's I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see with my own eyes how they do it. And you pointed out how they, they're, they're incredibly smart. I just, you know, and, and they're like, I don't know how they know all these things that they do and how they're able to do a lot of the stuff they do. It, at some level and you know we can even talk about this a little bit there's some sort of spiritual level to it they're getting some sort of access to something 
to be able to pull the blindfold over people so easily uh, and it, you know look back at all the, the movies the Wizard of Oz there's the man behind the curtain they, they put a lot of this stuff out there in various forms I'm not saying whoever wrote the Wizard of Oz is necessarily with those guys or anything I don't know uh, but a lot of this stuff is out there it's, it's they have a bit of a, a thing where they and I, this might be part of their beliefs and maybe you understand their beliefs better than I but they appear to need have a need to tell people what they're going to do to them uh, before they do it there, there seems to be a sub, some sort of natural law that they're aware of that they have to do that and another thing and this is a big thing a lot of people will say well, what you know Barack Obama and Donald Trump and uh, all the all the all these people the central bank people Ben Bernanke like these people aren't that smart and it's like no they're not that smart uh, they're just basically puppets doing these sort of a thing uh, but they don't even know necessarily what they're actually doing as you pointed out but they've, they've set up the systems in place where they've incentivized everyone to be doing their work without even knowing they're doing their work for them and on top of that just my final comment here is that it's, it's really ingenious how they've done it because they seem to understand that uh, if you kill a lot of innocent people necessarily and you don't tell them you're going to do it and if uh, you actually do it with your own hands you will have repercussions whether you want to call it karma going to hell whatever you there's all sorts of different words for these sort of things they seem to understand that so they've set up a system where they don't actually have to do anything themselves they get other people to do it for them uh, and those are people like order followers people in the police or in the military who go and kill innocent people and they and they have no uh, repercussions karmically or however you want it whatever you think is actually going on they don't seem to have the repercussions because they didn't actually do it they just convinced those people to go do it for them so you know you can, I just said a lot of things there. I'm sure you have a lot of comments so you can just take it from there yeah yeah um, every one of those is such a deep subject you know we could <laughs> we could really spend some time on it and we should at some point but basically yeah they're aware they have to follow certain their rules so they, these guys didn't make up those rules they they exist in trying to get the benefit that they want from the the bad things that they're doing two of them are they have to have certain milestones they reach and recognize and others are they have to give certain notices to the people that are their victims that's us and the whole biosphere actually not just humans um, so they realize they have to do that and the power that you mentioned that helps them with this level of intelligence that they have and what they need to accomplish that there there's a negative polarity in this dimension of existence that is real conscious and intelligent and it they worship that it it's what loves everything and connected with suffering and destruction and all that it's real not something that normal people would relate to at all and it does give them the ability to achieve more it's used a lot in hollywood and uh, other kinds of business areas and things like that and in fact some of the uh, performers in hollywood have been surprised by it and said wow they wanted me to actually worship satan to get this position and they weren't kidding and the word whether you call it satan or not makes no difference at all it's just it's that there's a frequency that goes with that dark energy and it does give people a certain kind of power that's like a drug and then they get all excited about that and want more and then in the end they'll do whatever it takes to get more of that the problem with that and i, I have several things i want to say at once in response to all the great the issues you brought up they the people that are well, two main things. The people that are thinking that they are, they're going to avoid the karma for what they're doing by following the rules, getting people to do it for them, and thinking that we're so stupid that we'd go be their servants, which most of us do in certain ways. Um, they're mistaken in that uh, they will not be immune from karma for doing that. From what I found out about where karma comes from, it's in deep programming in the consciousness and the mind of the person that is doing the actions you don't need some nasty god to enforce penalties for things because your own consciousness will do it automatically um, no separate god has to watch you carefully and if he doesn't see what you're doing you know you're going to get away with something you don't get away with anything ever because your own consciousness is right there and because it comes from the same source even if you're playing the part of a really bad person right now you came from the same sources everything came from and that consciousness is part of that and it wants you back 
So that's the reason that it enforces karma. It's actually for your learning experience and benefit. And that's a huge subject in itself. And it's not, it's not evil at the deepest levels. And neither are the people who are playing those parts. But for us, even knowing about the extent of the negative forces, the nice thing about that is that the positive ones are so far beyond that that the solution is being carried inside everybody. And just knowing about how bad things are doesn't mean that the end result is going to be bad. In the long run, we're guaranteed to be okay to such a degree we can't imagine. But what my interest is in that, in the present lifetime and moment for right now, is I personally prefer for people and other beings not to have to go through all this torture. And so I wanted to know, yeah, we'll be okay in the long run, which I really feel clear about. But how about being okay sooner than that and turning things around on this planet so it doesn't become hell on earth, which is part of the plan before extinction? Why don't we do the opposite? And I found out we have the ability to make that happen. Yeah, one of the things I've I've said in various ways, and I, I really do believe, is that we all have the ability to change the world. And the thing that I think we've been mostly uh, um, sort of robbed of is uh, not knowing that, uh, having that, uh, that knowledge taken away from us, uh, uh, that uh, every single person can actually change the world in a good way if you want to. And and it's, it's actually not even that hard. And But they put all these systems in place. You're born, they're, they're cutting off half your skin off your penis, if, you know, circumcising, they're injecting the vaccines, they're rubbing stuff in your eyes so you can't see your mom, so you don't have a, a love connection with your mom. As soon as you get through all that they, they got you oh don't breastfeed because that's not very healthy here take some chemical milk and and then uh, throw you into the government indoctrination camps you're getting beat up and you're being told that you better get an A or you're never gonna have a good job and and all this stuff and I could go on and on and on uh, is it, it at the end of the day leaves people going oh this life sucks I am uh, just I'm no one and I have no ability and I just have to go along and get a job and do what I'm told and all these sort of things but the actual truth of the matter is every single person has the ability to dramatically change the world, uh, in my opinion. And I know you, you, you believe that as well. I guess, uh, you know, for maybe you want to talk about that or maybe we should talk about how you can get to that stage. And I know you believe that health is a big part of that to sort of be able to vibrate on different levels, to sort of raise your consciousness, uh, to be able to uh, affect the world in, in ways that we're capable of doing. Yeah, an, another 10-hour question is really great. And um, I, I do totally believe every single person has virtually unlimited power. And it's not, by, it's not primarily by what we do physically, although that comes as a natural outgrowth of what happens internally. But my understanding now, and, and I'm just totally aware that I'm, I'm a beginner in all this, and... You know, I, I have enough that I have to share it now. I've spent more than half a century on it, but but compared to what there is to know, I mean, I, I'm below preschool level, and I, I really mean that. But still, what, what I've seen at this level so far is that we're totally not physical beings. We have these amazing costumes, physical bodies, and we have minds, which are different than brains. Brains is part of the body. Mind is above the physical level and, and survives physical death. Um, and that, But who we are is not mind, it's not energy, it's not light, it's not uh, frequency, it's not... It's what all those things come from. It's really quite, you know, totally mind-boggling. And um, reconnecting to that, to one step after another closer and closer, makes everything else possible and whatever you do on the physical level starts to have immense amounts of power and potential based on the consciousness and the reason that physical health matters for any of that you can do a lot of it without you know even if you're really sick and everything but it just makes it so much easier to get the physical the uh, internal connection back 
once you get rid of the health issues. And so when, when I ran into the document, the book that you mentioned, The Essene Gospel, I was about 10, 10 years into the health um, re- experimental research that I was doing at that time. That was 75. And I really resonated with what was in that book, not just the words, but the the feeling and the energy that I picked up for it. You might have had some similar feeling. And for me, I remembered actually being there. And I have some partial memory of old times like that. I'd like to have a lot more. But I had enough, so I recognized it. And I started working on how do you adapt what Jesus was actually teaching in terms of physical health that, like you said, never made it into the Bible. That went through a lot of hands of human censors for their own reasons, and they were setting up a power structure as well. Now, it was called religion, but it was like a government in a way. And Jesus was never teaching religion in my experience, but he was teaching incredible stuff, not just how to reconnect to your source and how to live to do that and then what that would allow you to do, but how to take care of your physical body and it it was incredible so I took that and and it was all set in an environment of about 2,000 years ago and I said well we really need to know how to do that how to adapt it to use now and so I spent a lot of time over the next 40 some years experimentally trying it and like you're doing with the fasting and um, I wanted to know all about how will it fit in the current environment so that we can then use it to get to the next level and start reversing the trend that's negative in the world right now so people have a I just want everybody to be okay I mean that's my whole motive so but what I did find that was really interesting is um, to really do the physical things that Jesus is referring to and a lot of other great health teachers have referred to parts of it as well uh, in more recent times and, and older times too. In order to really put it to use requires starting to work on consciousness at the same time. Because if you don't do that, then you run into emotional barriers that come up when you try to change habits that you're really attached to. and. The obvious addictions are not the only ones. I mean, just because you're not a heroin addict doesn't mean you're not an addict in a hundred different ways. And when you start to have to physically look at those and even consider changing them, it feels scary and difficult and and your mind will come up with a million ways why it, it may be illogical, but you'd rather be sick and have a harder and harder time than have to actually face your own daily habits. And so to not have that barrier, that really interested me. And I had to find consciousness tools that take away the need for willpower so that you can do this easily. And I found that to be very valuable. Yeah, that's great. Um, I don't know if you want to get into some of those tools, but uh, very interesting. I know you also have a sort of a private uh, radio uh, show thing that, uh, as you told me earlier, like if you t- if you talked about a lot of stuff, you might get banned or killed uh, off the yeah, internet. Yeah, one or the other, whatever comes first, you know. Yeah, one or the other. And so you're a little bit careful about how you spread that information. And, and you, we've seen it with, you know, natural doctors coming out with stuff and, and, you know, they have major problems. And I've seen it with everything I ever do. You, do you try to attack the system or not even attack the system but trying to get away from the system and and live uh, a better life uh, you will uh, they, they will do some things and they'll try to stop you in various ways and yeah. things like that so you know I, I was actually trying to be pretty invisible for most of the time I was doing this work and then about five years ago I got asked to do the radio show that you were on and um, so I figured all right this is obviously what I need to do and I'm just not going to worry about it but I'll try to be in as smart as possible about the words I use and, and what to do. So, um, I think the biggest fear of the power structure at the top levels, the uh, lower ones might not understand, but at the top levels, clearly their fear is that we become aware of who we are. Anything that would lead to that, they don't like because, see, we have a lot more potential to do things than they do. 
because one of the many laws of nature that we haven't been told is that if we have malice for anybody, bad intent for anybody, whether it's justified or not, because it's always justified when people have wars and stuff, both sides are justified to, it, to themselves. And if you have any malintent toward anybody at all, even if they're really being bad, that restricts you to the lowest levels of access to your power. And that's restricting the uh, whole negative hierarchy right now. And they know it at the top. And they know we don't have that restriction. So what they want to do is two things. One is give us that restriction by making us hate each other. At mm-hmm. which point, forget accessing your own real power, you won't do it. And the other is to keep you away from any reality of understanding who you are and what you can really do. So that's good guidance for us. That, you know, Government guidance in general is wonderful. I trust government completely because whatever they say is great, with rare exceptions, is probably going to really hurt or kill you. And what they say is dangerous is probably essential for life. So it's a wonderful guidance source. And if you take it to the top levels, um, their main thing being that we should never find out what we can really do, great, that means that's the main thing we should focus on. And we can talk about tools for that. I I mean, there are these two things happening in parallel when you try to make some progress in this direction. One is that we're physically doing things, most of us, because we don't know, that are really hurting our bodies. And the other thing is, in parallel to that, mind, this is, I'm sorry if this is going to sound really weird, but, you know, we're on, we're on your show, so you're, you're used to it. None of this sounds weird at all to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, mind is a really important thing to understand and so is body you know we think we understand our physical body i'm this old i look like this i'm this race or this tall or this much weight or whatever but some of this is hard to put in words but because the origin was formless consciousness what people call god or spirit or source or the the name is completely irrelevant i don't use the word god too much because it it's become stereotyped into this really nasty male figure that wants to um, throw you into permanent torture if you don't obey, but it's because he loves you so much. And I'm not trying to do that image at all. I'm talking about something way beyond that human concept that people will kill for at a level that we don't really have access to yet, but we can because it's where we came from and it's who we are. So when we came down to the the physical level we needed a couple things in order to have the experience that we needed here for the lessons that are available on this on this dimension one of them was we needed an interface between spirit which is what we are no matter what we believe that's a whole other issue we needed something called mind as an interface between that and the almost infinite information that defines the physical world and that's mind and mind is amazing and it has access to all information relating to this level um it's not it doesn't have a subconscious or an unconscious that's from our point of view because we're not in touch with it to mind it's all conscious and mind is self-aware it's not a thing it's not like just some kind of energetic entity or something it's aware like a person is even though it's our projection. So that opens up possibilities. It means that we can have two-way communication with mind. And if we make it into an ally, all kinds of things like the basis of karma completely change. And the old yogis in the Himalayas and, you know, were really smart guys meditating in caves and trying to get through the facade of the physical appearance of everything. And they, they saw that mind was generating these thoughts and emotions that were really messing up their life and clouding their perception and making them identify with things that they weren't. So they tried to fight with mind. That's a really bad approach, and it doesn't work, because you end up having mind fight itself, and all it, it can have some very unusual results, and apparently miraculous things happening from 
some of the discipline that they were doing the ascetics but um it doesn't end a problem and it keeps karma going but if if you make mind an ally which you can start to do by just becoming aware like the first tool that i would mention is becoming aware of the constant flow of um thoughts and emotions going in the back of your mind all the time that we're so used to we just assume it's us and we don't pay any attention as soon as you step back and watch that instead of watching to criticize everybody around you and situations and who to blame and what to feel bad about or all the stuff that we do instead of that it's a new habit that you can form to start watching the programming that's go- taking place um in your own mind and just becoming aware of that starts to separate you from it which is a step toward experiencing who you are the other is that body is self aware also and it's in fact it's this complex network of different awarenesses the body as a whole has its own consciousness it's it's aware of itself that way every part of the body like your arm has a separate consciousness capable of communication and you take it down to cells and atoms every one of them is a self-aware being this is all interwoven and we're the resident and they're all keeping their focus on us all the time which is why you know like looking up to god or something they they look at us with that degree of constant um focus and that's why your thoughts and emotions affect your physical body because the body and the cells and the parts of the body and the organs they take your thoughts and your emotions as orders like definitions of reality and that's um what they make happen so if you feel hopeless and depressed or really angry or upset about anything or in some kind of a a negative frequency you would say your cells believe that's the reality and they start to make it come true and that that's where the power of the placebo comes in because something that you believe not on the memory level where you just memorize what your group is supposed to believe but um the gut level belief that controls your feeling on that level if you have a feeling that things are really great or you believe something's going to heal you um it tends to do that even if it's just you know water or something because it's all programmed so that's one of the first tools and and generally in parallel to get the best results you need to start learning the physical mundane details of, that are talked about in the scene gospel of stuff that affects your body like every every single thing that you eat here because everything you do has an effect everything you eat does something to your body pos- positive or negative what you drink what you breathe you know in the air or smoking cigarettes and marijuana and different things uh drugs you take exercise that you do or don't do everybody their body needs three different kinds of exercise and if you miss those then you know the degeneration that they call normal aging starts taking over sunlight exposure is critical we're told that it's bad for you and it will kill you so you know it's right i mean <laughs> yep. and grounding to the earth where the mm-hmm. 7.83 normal human frequency is supposed to you know harmonize with the body and bring you back to normal and instead of being surrounded by wifi and all these intentionally disruptive energies so you learn the physical protocols and it's a progression it's not like on the first day you're making the mis- mistakes and the second day it's all great you, if you if you change it too fast it's going to be harder and so you start by getting rid of the stuff that's the most damaging and keep moving that way in fasting fits in as a detox protocol that is built into the body so that it can keep renewing itself and uh it's not like fasting cures anything it's just that the life current that is enlivening your body right now all the time is very aware and knows exactly what you personally need for healing and the only thing is it 
physically it can't attend to that as long as you're keeping it busy with too much food and, and kinds of food that are actually damaging you because that's what they're designed to do. And um, once you take those out of the way and the body says, wow, I don't have to put all this work into digestion and assimilation and elimination of food, I know the next thing to do is these toxins that I couldn't get rid of before that I stored in the cells, trillions of cells all over the body. It knows where every single deposit is, how to remove it, and it does it in waves so that it doesn't take it all out at once and it poisons you too much. So if you learn how to use fasting and uh, cleaning the gut at the same time with water, it's called enemas, which they used uh, back since the beginning in other forms. Um, then the physical level and the uh, consciousness tools work together. And you can tell if you're getting closer, because as you do, this feeling of, um, I can't even describe it, it's like really happy, <laughs> starts coming up from nowhere. And because it's, it's part of who you are. You, we're trained that we need everything outside to happen a certain way to be happy or it comes from a different person that you're with or it comes from some great event that happens that that was never true that the real happiness is in the other direction it comes from inside you and as you do these things what you're approaching is just feeling really good all the time and as you want more that drags you in the right direction and and the radiation that's coming out of you like a frequency which is happening now, but it's scattered in most people and chaotic and negative. When that gets coherent, that's the most powerful way that you affect the whole world because everybody else is running on a frequency too, even the so-called bad guys, except that where you can get to is much more powerful than them. So you get farther in that direction and you say something innocuous like, hello, and it carries your frequency, and it will change people down to their core. But the way to do it is forget about changing the outside so much. Change the inside, and then these ways to change the outside are just going to come up, and you won't be able to avoid them. They're just going to happen as part of your inner process. Yeah, that's something that I've been talking about for a couple of years now that I realized that I didn't realize uh, di <laughs> eyes, uh, that um, that I didn't realize before. And, uh, you know, as a male and growing up in an environment of basically very violent environment, you know, basically grow up, get beat up every day, have to beat up other people. The, the game we played was hockey where it's just all fighting. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, the way to be, you know, a strong man in this world is to be that way and in order to change the world I have to go out there and kill some people or yeah. force them to do things and all this sort of stuff right. and it led me down a path where I ended up incredibly depressed and uh, through a number of things and the uh, psychedelics helped me at the very beginning just get to change my my vibe a little bit and and then once I started with a bit of fasting and you mentioned the enemas all of a sudden I was like I haven't felt this good in a long time and all of a sudden everything uh, just started to change around me and I could see, like as you said as your as your frequency changes or whatever you want to say it actually affects the people around you and this is yeah. where I come back to what we were saying that we can change the world dramatically but it's not about going out there and holding up a sign or yelling at people it's actually going in and changing yourself and then everything changes uh, outside of you uh, that's that's the real key and, and you brought up earlier about <coughs> Well, first of all, how everything we're told is if it, by the government or the mainstream media or anything, do the exact opposite because that's that's what uh, safe, they want. Yeah, yeah it's pr it's a pretty good rule of thumb and. Um, you know, the, like, who are you sort of a thing. Uh, you know, if you ask your average person, you just go up to them and go, hey, like, who are you really? And they'll go, I'm an accountant. 
And it's like, no, but that's what you do. But like, who are you? And they'll be like, well, I'm 35 years old. It's like, that's the age of your body. Who are you? You know, they just have no concept of what we've just been talking about. And that's on purpose. And then they built up this whole thing of scientism. And they're like, oh, you know, this was just an, a, 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 just a, like, there was an explosion six billion years ago. Six, six, six billion. They always put in the six, six, six somewhere. And, uh, and uh, they, uh, it's, they're actually hilarious. I actually think the more I learn about these guys, they're pretty funny. The way they do things, they got, they've got everyone believing the wrong thing and they throw in all these like little clues all the time and it, like they must just think it's hilarious to, to destroy so many people for whatever reason. Uh, but yeah, so their, their whole thing is, yeah, so six billion years ago there was nothing. Okay, then what happened? An explosion. Oh, and that's science. Okay. And, uh, and then it's just, you know, now there's everything. And that's not a religion or anything. That's, that, that, that's science. And, uh, and there was nothing here and, you know, then some water came to the planet from meteorites. Really? Where the how do the meteorites have water? Oh, don't don't worry about that. It's all science. And, and then there was nothing. And then there was some amoebas. And and then there was rats. And and that turned into you. So you're basically a rat living in the middle of nowhere, uh, in an infinite universe. And uh, you're not important whatsoever. And so just eat your eat your pizza that we're going to drive down your throats with advertising and all this sort of stuff. Take your vaccines. Uh, go to your schools so you get educated. Uh, so you never learn anything. And uh, that's basically what they've done to people is, is and you can just see it and that's what's actually the problem in most societies today is that people are just absolutely destroyed and they don't even know they're destroyed and they don't know that there's actually a way to fix it all and it's it's actually quite simple uh, little things like don't eat for a couple of days or uh, you know you can go on about some other sort of things but like just you know stop doing all those things and uh, you can get back to being very good and and once you do that all of a sudden the world changes so yeah this is all the hidden from us and it's, it's actually quite simple isn't it like really what you're talking about is not very complicated is it right no you don't have to be a really advanced physicist or anything <laughs> to understand it in fact um it it's beyond mind the reality is completely beyond mind mind is just an interface to deal with all the complexities of the world but who we are is not even part of that mm -hmm. the original part and so, yeah, I completely agree. It, it's quite simple. And yeah, the reason it's hard to change is basically we just, everybody just want to feel, wants to feel good. Even the bad guys who are torturing people and everything, they think that causing pain is going to make them feel really good. That's why they do it. And they're on a drug, you know, that's their drug. So we have it on a milder scale that we think eating something that we know maybe isn't good for us makes us feel good it's closer to being happy and that's the point of the whole thing and it, it takes a certain amount of um i guess maybe disappointment that, and realization that that's not really making you very happy and it, all of these temporary things wear off and you don't you don't want to have it wear off anymore you want to feel good all the time and you eventually get to a point where you really want that and you're willing to do some things to change it and you also have a motivation to maybe really want to do something good in the outside world or for other people so that they could feel good too and it's not like giving them an unlimited supply of some special food it would be affecting them by resonance by what you become so that eventually you see there's no way around having to deal with what is inside of you and you don't need to do decades of psychoanalysis or anything because that's all on a, a lower level contained within the mind programs. And what you're going to be doing is completely separating from those programs 100% and then opening up a new communication with mind and body, which are like your abandoned children that you've just been letting them run around not cared for since before you were born. And they yeah, this is something they're not very that's... happy about that. Yeah, this is something that I didn't realize whatsoever, and it was actually my therapist who said it to me for the first time, and I was quite surprised when he said it. Uh, we were just talking, and he said, have you ever thought to thank your body? And I was like, no, why? Why would I thank my body? He's like, it's been carrying you around for like over 40 years. It, you put in so much garbage, it takes care of it. It's, it's doing trillions of activities at any given moment, taking care of every single part of you. And when he said that, I was like, 
oh yeah I, why didn't I think to thank my body and you know I started to do that a little bit like start to acknowledge it. it's like well thank you very much like wow I like amazing and uh, then he was like do you ever think to thank your mind I was like well aren't I my mind he's like well think about that I was like well why would I thank my mind he's like because it's it does everything for you <laughs> like yeah. it, it's 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 telling you like you know it's helping you to get through this whole 3d world and and get all the information's in there and do you ever th think to thank and I didn't so the whole point of this is that most people including myself have never thought that these are separate sort of agent beings that we have to live with uh, whoever we whatever we are but like you know we're different than the mind we're different than the body whatever that is we're all together here right now and if we don't work together as a team and recognize we are a team then it can just got kind of get all crappy but if we can recognize that we are a team and start to actually you know uh, thank them and, and work with them and say thank you very much I do this all the time now I'm like thank you thank you so much it, like the body is, is truly an intelligent being and, and that's where the whole saying uh, listen to your gut comes from right it's because it actually it it's conscious so you meet a person you'll be like I don't know what it is he said all the right things but it didn't feel right in my gut it's like your body is actually sitting there going no this side this vibration is not right or whatever it is and then of course your mind will also do similar type of things and they can kind of lead you astray if you don't know how to work with your mind but uh, th there are sort of three things and I don't know if that's where this whole sort of the Holy Trinity came from I'm starting to think about all these things now like body mind and soul they actually kind of talk about that they talk about your body as a temple and if you can clean out the temple obviously you can get closer to you know some sort of connection with the source whatever you want to call it that sort of thing so so I just want to throw that in that this is stuff that I had no idea about that I, I think is totally true now like that it's sort of my own experience these are my body is an intelligent separate entity and so is my mind and it's sort of like trying to figure out how that all works together and work better with them can really have some amazing results. Right, and it, it can totally change your relationships to every other person in your life as well um, in a few different ways. One of them is like you were saying, the, the people that um, are not friendly, in fact, maybe they're, they're so intimidating or, or distant that you can't even talk to them, they're affected immediately, starting immediately by changing your internal perspective and we don't realize it but you know you've, you've heard that people who practice certain religions like uh, Santeria or voodoo or things like that are, are involved in cursing and blessing people right and they really believe in that but we don't realize most of us that we're actually totally devoted to that and we're doing it all the time so the way that you feel towards somebody affects them even if they're not conscious of it and we're cursing and blessing people without paying any, any attention. If, if you start making that conscious, just like your other guest was talking about, Anil was his name, I think? Anil Gupta, yeah. Yeah, he was saying about acts of kindness. Well, your intent and your thought are acts of kindness or unkindness nonstop. So not only are you doing a lot of these acts all day, you're doing them all the time. And if you start blessing everybody which means really sincerely on a feeling level wishing for wonderful things to happen to them even if they're really unpleasant or difficult or dangerous people because that could be us if we were looking through their eyes then um, that comes back to you like multiplied starting immediately even if you don't feel it and and when they you know you talked about the things in the Bible some really good things and some not true things and some really nasty things all mixed together I think they left some good things in there by mistake actually but one of them was love your neighbor as yourself and we may not realize that's because they are yourself you know we're not just one team and family we're actually one being experiencing itself in all these different forms so that's why we're so affected by each other and if you start using that connection by sending out the most wonderful wishes for everybody that you really mean it starts immediately changing all about everything about your perception changes your whole world
Yeah, you told me that in a private session we had together. And one thing that I've, I think I've done right in my life accidentally is just like nothing I never planned is I've always been the kind of person who doesn't wish ill on anyone. I just don't. Uh, even like Donald Trump or all these people, I don't hope he dies tomorrow. I don't. I hope he stops doing the things he's doing. But I, I don't. I literally don't wish ill on anyone. I never have. For whatever reason, it's just been something I've always done. And uh, you know, I might not hope for the best for them. I, I might not hope Donald Trump has the best day tomorrow or anything like that but uh, I definitely don't wish ill on anyone really and a lot of people have said about my life they're like how is it that you no, no matter what happens you're always fine and everything seems to work out for you and you know you saying that I'm, I'm thinking maybe I've been kind of like creating my own reality that way in that I'm just not giving off bad energy to people I'm actually giving them quite good energy and it just comes back to me somehow I don't understand how it works but I think there's definitely something to it so uh, you told told me about ways that I can even go further and actually think about people and, and really hope for the best for them in various ways. And I've been doing that with even people. I, I did it with the per person who defrauded me and, and stuff like that. I've been doing it with other people. I did it with like people around me, including my family. I just like, you know, wish the very best for them. And I, could, I can kind of see it's changing everyone. <laughs> it really like, does. <laughs> I mean, we had one... Oh, I don't mean to make this longer than you want to... Make it, yeah, we, we shouldn't make it too long, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, there's so much really relevant, I, important, yeah. interesting stuff here. There's a system called Ho'oponopono, which is, you know, really not discovering anything new, but it configured it in a way that maybe was kind of unique. It was a guy in, in Hawaii, I think, at the time named Dr. Hugh Len, and um, he, he found a way of projecting doing what you just said, projecting good wishes towards somebody. And it was based on this really deep concept and reality that everybody in your universe that you perceive and don't perceive that's a part of it, in every circumstance, everything that happens in your universe is projected by you. And that's true not just for you, but for absolutely everybody. And that goes beyond what mind can really grasp because it starts saying, well, how can all these people be in control at the same time? And it, it, they are. And what that means is that anybody, including us, who decides to make use of that can change the projection, which includes everybody else's behavior. And you, you can't do it, you can't use that in a way that hurts anybody because it won't work. You have to, actually have this benevolent wish for people like you were explaining that you naturally have which is incredible and um, he was called to help at a mental hospital where all the patients were becoming violent and the employees were all quitting because they couldn't handle it and it was really a hellish situation kind of like a microcosm of some things happening in the world you might say but what he did he was called in to deal with it he took the personal files of each of the patients, each of the inmates, and um, didn't try to do it by interacting with the patient's physical, you know, being, but took those files and focused on each one and really, the key was that he really meant it sincerely and tuned into that person. And he said four things. He said, um, I love you. I'm sorry please forgive me, which I changed to please forgive me and heal. And the last thing was thank you, each one of which he absolutely meant. And over some time, all the patients got better and many of them went home normal again. Um, that's really significant because it can be used not just by him in a mental hospital, by, but by us in anything. And I think ultimately when we start to really absorb how to do that in a deep way, I think it could be used on a scale of planetary scale. Because it's only one tiny planet in the universe. Size is really totally relative. And once we get rid of the belief that we can't do that, if we make the change internally, and not just say we believe it, but really change our perception, I think that's our key to turning this whole thing around on a level that we're going to like a lot.
Yeah, uh, there's something to what you're talking about. And I, I've tried some of this stuff myself, and I can see the results. So there's going to be some people out there who are going to go, these guys are crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, there's no scientific proof that this can happen. It's like, well, that's your mind talking right there. But, um, you know, try it out for yourself. You know, just try treating everyone uh, with true, like, uh, wish the best for them, even if you don't like them, and, and see if that changes things around you. I, I definitely noticed it changing things, even as I've started to focus on it. And as I pointed out, my whole life, I kind of, have been doing that. I've never wished anything ill on anyone, I don't think, ever. And uh, th everyone's like, how are you so lucky? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, maybe I've already been doing some of that stuff and it, and it is reverberating back to me in whatever form it is. Not to say that I've had the perfect life, I've had a lot of problems, but I always seem to get through everything fine. I never seem to be sick or anything and right. all that kind of stuff. One of, one of the main barriers of people even try thinking of trying to do that is the understanding of what love means and, and we've all been taught that first you really like something or somebody and then if it goes further you, like you really love them you think they're wonderful that's not the kind of love that this is talking about it's like when the sun shines on the earth it's not judging which plant is worth letting live and things like that it's a a free unconditional gift to everybody even the the people doing the worst things in the world get the full sunlight if they want it, which they usually don't. But the love is, is like that. It's like you have this capability. It's like watering a plant to give this life-giving energy to anybody. And the people who are in the worst shape need it the most. But everybody does. But you have this unlimited supply. If you feel like you're giving it from your personality, you can burn yourself out. And it doesn't work. But if you feel it coming into you from an unlimited source and just let it flow through to everybody and say, here, share it, because it's just rushing into you in a flood, not only do you not get tired or burned out, no matter what they do, but you're going to really like the experience. It's kind of exhilarating. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah, um, I, we I try to keep these shorter. I don't know how long we've been talking yeah, already. Quite a while, actually. More than 10 minutes, probably. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, we could talk for hours and hours, and uh, may, may I should have you on again at some point, or definitely I should. Uh, it's just a matter of when and how, and so many amazing people I need to talk to. But uh, you might come down to Narcopoco. You also have your show. You should let people know about that. Let them know about the sort of the private show. Let them know that you do, I don't know if you do that to everyone, what you did with me, but you did like a private session with me. You might also want to, uh, Richard, just sort of put it out there, because what I've found uh, with uh, life and reality is once you speak something or once you even write something it starts to uh, become reality and it's like the, the power of the spoken word or even when you when you spell something it's called spelling for a reason you're essentially it's like casting a spell yeah. uh, you're creating it and you, they say you write in cursive that's like casting a curse you know it's, yeah. it's all kind of hidden yeah. language that they, they've done so you might want to just put it out there to the universe uh, that you would like to start a school for this sort of thing at some point if you want to do that and yeah, then sure. feel free to let people know everything you're up to Okay. Well, if it's okay, then in response to that, I'll mention four different things. As far as the show goes, it's Lost Arts Radio. And we have weekly guest shows like we did with you. And the archives going back five years are available. They're all free and available. And you can go to Lost, L-O-S-T, Arts, A-R-T-S, plural, radio.com. And that's access to all the archives and all the current and upcoming shows and articles and videos and all kinds of stuff there um, the private club um, well I, oh, also one more thing Lost Arts Radio has a couple of different shows it's got a, a guest show like I just mentioned it's also got kind of a news summary show that comes up uh, Saturday afternoons and that's all described there too you can see that implications of some of the things happening in the world physically and then the club which is really a major focus I started that because if anybody's interested in actually learning what's forbidden about health information and also consciousness tools that people can use in their own life situation whatever they're dealing with with uh, life relationships health issues getting their body back reversing aging which you can definitely do and all this stuff then we need to talk about it privately uh, because the censorship is really ramping up right now and um, anything that goes against what the global rulers want 
is probably going to be gone. So we set up a private members site, uh, which is at planetaryhealingclub.com, planetaryhealingclub.com, and it'll show you access there. Um, that's where we can talk privately. And I, I, yeah, I do private consulting sessions, but they're limited in availability and they're expensive. And so I thought, why not give people, uh, even if they hardly have any money, the ability to have the same benefit and every week, even if they miss the live interaction, they can have the archives. And this is a cheap, really good way to do it because you can get constant interaction. And I'm there live every week on Saturday evenings, at least U.S. time. And um, if it's a bad time of day in your part of the world, then you just watch the archive and email in your feedback and we can still interact. PlanetaryHealingClub.com. That's really exciting. That's to get your own life and health back, but also if you want to become part of a very serious project to change the um, situation planet-wide. And it sounds impossible, but it's not impossible. There's, there's some incredible stuff that you always had available, and, and we just get out of touch with it, that's all. It's beyond what people would call magic. And then as far as the last thing that um, Jeff mentioned, if people think I'm crazy, this will cement the, <laughs> the idea completely, that when I was sleeping in a lab where I was working at the time, and I was given details of a school that I'm supposed to start so that it's not just a few of us, but everybody around the world who's ready to actually to look at and do the work required. That's the thing about Planetary Healing Club. It's not really for spectators so much. It's if you're ready to really start changing stuff in your life and do the work, we'll get into the specific tools. And the school is a place where it could be demonstrated and experienced out in the open physically and I was shown all about what that has to look like and how to build it and uh, how to run it and everything, but I don't have any money for it. So, And I'm not going to do anything to raise money that would taint the atmosphere because that has to be kept really clear and pure. So the only thing we're really doing right now to take in money for the nonprofit that I started to eventually fund the school and at least keep us going in the meantime is I started a nonprofit called uh, lostartsresearchinstitute.org. You can see it there. And uh, if we find a way to get the money without compromising the intent and with no bad strings attached or you know, promoting anything I, I don't really want to promote or anything like that, if we find a source of the money, and I know there are people around who could support it if they wanted to without even noticing, then we'll build a school. And I've I have the details so that we could start building it tomorrow if uh, that happens. So it's out there to the universe now. That's great. So I think most things that have been really like changed the world uh, usually come in the form of some sort of just download from the university. You hear about this all the time. So I don't find there's anything strange about that. In fact, a lot of the things that I've done that have really, you know, changed some things, uh, it usually comes in the form of uh, 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 just a, a, I'm meditating or in a dream and it just comes in, you know. Exactly. You know, so yeah, I, and we shouldn't have preconceptions about how it has to happen. You know, so what, whatever's supposed to be, I, that's what I want. And the more you learn about your source and how connected you are to it and how really that's ultimately who you are. It's not sacrilegious to discover that. And, and all the greatest teachers who have been trying to share this stuff, many of them had to eventually say, yeah, that's what happened. That's who I am now. And they usually got tortured and killed for openly saying that. But it, it's where we're all going, and it's not a bad thing. So in the end, I mean, you just don't want to do anything other than what spirit wants and say, okay, you know, you take my life and just live it for me. That's not some selfless thing at all. <laughs> that's 100% selfish. It's just realizing that that's what's going to um, really start making things better in, a, in amazing ways. Might as well start enjoying it right away. So I, I'm hoping I can meet some of you guys at Anarchast and maybe at the club meetings too. You're invited. 
Great. And yeah, hopefully you can make it down to Narcopoco. There's going to be so many people that are so on the same oh, wavelength. Yeah, yeah. And so many people that uh, are on the same wavelength. As you, you pointed out, Neil Gupta is doing similar sort of stuff. Uh, I've had on so many people. They're all going to be at the health and wellness sort of portion of the event. So there uh, should be some amazing people around. And as we're expecting two to 3,000 people uh, also coming as well. And uh, so many of them are sort of just on a different level than most people you ever normally meet. So it's really quite an amazing event. I hope you can make it down. If you like this video, if you found this interesting at all, and uh, I don't know how you couldn't find it interesting, but if you found this uh, yeah, useful or, or something that uh, you enjoyed or anything like that just hit like subscribe share down below we get censored we get shadow banned uh, <laughs> we, we, I, I think I have uh, 250,000 subscribers to YouTube on Dollar Vigilante and then we'll put up a video and I'll get like 5,000 views or something uh, so we get shadow banned and all that so you have to like the so subscribe share we're also on um, Steam it we're on DTube uh, you know support us there if you can or whatever you want to do I don't really care uh, but do what you want to do uh, you know it's all that uh, sort of giving and, and giving back sort of a thing so if you enjoyed this video and you want to give something back just hit that little like button doesn't hurt too much and uh one one thing about that jeff i'm sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. keep your train of thought but as far as the shadow banning and the banning is going on you know we have the same thing on on youtube and we might you know get almost no viewers but when that finally gets banned completely there is there are multiple channels but one of them that looks like it's going to be really good is brighteon.com b-r-i-g-h-t Eon, like bright future or something like that. Brighteon.com, and if we disappear everywhere else, um, that's still going to keep us alive. So you can find us. Uh, great. I didn't even know about that one. I know about BitShoot, BitTube, DTube. I think we're on all of them. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So check check those out. We'll have uh, you know check those out, and we'll have the links to your stuff all down below. And and uh, that's basically it. As I mentioned, Nar Narcopoco coming up February 14th to 17th. The hotel's almost completely sold out now, but there's a few rooms left. So if you want to stay at the Princess Hotel, which is a thousand rooms, uh, the, uh, the make sure you do that in the next week or two. I think it's going to sell out before then uh, and an Arcapoco might sell out by I don't want to make a guess but probably before the conference begins it will be sold out so if you want to come down and, and check it all out you can and uh, feel free to do so and that's it for Anarchast your home for anarchy on the internet peace love and anarchy